So rentals in the villages is skyrocketing. It used to be only about 30 on here. Now there's 61 rentals on the MLS. That's just the MLS. That's not even including like Facebook groups. There's some village Facebook rental groups. Uh, maybe the villages doing their own rentals as well for clients. Um, that doesn't include rentals that are off market, not on the MLS. So if, if our inventory here has doubled almost in the last couple months, um, you can see that you know the inventory is ramping up and that not only has demand fallen on the sales side, but it's also falling on the rental side. If you look here, I mean, 61 homes for rent on the villages. And I think tend to think that the rent in the villages on the MLS are better than like the websites of Facebook groups because they're all landlords in there. I think what you're better off doing is looking on the MLS to find some rentals. But I was actually quite surprised at all the rentals here and some of the rents are down below what you can actually buy the house for. So it kind of makes sense. You know, if you plan on just maybe renting uh, for a season or for, um, you know, during the busy season or maybe you're renting for a year before you really decide you want to move down there, you know, look on the MLS. There's probably a good way for you to find some property at a relatively cheaper cost. What I don't really care for about renting in the villages is that, you know, they want that expanded rent in January, February, March. They don't want to get, you know, double the rent or add another 1500 bucks to the rent just to rent that place during the busy season. And I just think that's kind of ridiculous on some of these homes. So, you know, sometimes it may even be better to rent just outside of the villages. You probably find some nicer homes out there. But, um, you know, again, you know, if you want the village's lifestyle, you're going to have to pay that three months. Now, there are rentals out there where they will pay just a flat fee, standard, let's say two grand a month for 12 months, and they don't care about that January, February, March. What they want is consistency. And that's probably a smart move on their part. Um, the problem is, you know, when you rent, move out, rent, move out, it, you know, it costs money. It costs money to do that. And every time you do it, you have to have a cleaning person come in. That costs money. you got to update, maybe make some repairs, some blemishes. That costs money. So renting in the villages can be difficult, and renting anywhere can be difficult in this market, especially today. Okay, and so look at this, 61 homes on the market. And the villages inventory has hit an all-time high. If you look here, go to this tab, all inventory. 520, it was just 521 a few minutes ago, so somebody sold one. But 520 homes on the market for sale, active, on the MLS in the villages. And my guess is we'll probably see that go up over time. There's a lot of homes on the market in Florida. I think I've seen probably inventory double easily in the last year, at least, in many places around Florida. And also, it's been a slow decline when it comes to to prices, but it is happening. And it's not just happening in Florida, it's happening in many, many, many states. The days of COVID ramp up are over. I think if you're waiting for the interest rates to drop back down to get your house sold at a higher price, that's probably not gonna happen. Rates just went up again. Um, yesterday, day before, they've gone up since the last announcement, the lower rates. And that seems to be the trend. Everybody's hoping, praying that rates will drop and that's not gonna happen. We can't. We're printing way too much money. And, uh, you know, if you want a tomato to be $10, you know, that that's kind of what you're going to get, praying for rates to go back down. And I still think that over time that the economy can be fixed. But you got to have people in power that really know what they're doing. And you got to have someone who actually has America's back first. I'm not saying that you don't work for the world, that you don't care for other countries. Obviously, we all want that. We all want sympathy honesty. We want to help people around the world. But at the same time, you have to take care of your country. And our country, literally in many places around the country, is falling apart. The infrastructure is bad. The bridges are bad. The roads are bad. The water systems, just in Syracuse in my area, the water systems in that city are 120 years old. Water is still being pumped to houses down there in the original wood casings of water delivery. So that's what you're having. You're having a bunch of these cities, and as sales slow, you're going to see taxes decrease across all these towns and villages and, and cities as real estate sales slow. So they need that income. And as you see car sales slow, car sales, big-time money going to the local community from car sales. You see people going to shop for food, going to shop for clothing, stuff for school for their kids. All that is slow tremendously. All that money goes to local coffers where they can divvy it out in tax base. All that is shrinking down. So you can see 
be very careful, and I would keep a very keen eye on your local villages, local towns, local counties, and their budgets. I think it'd be highly irresponsible for them to be spending money uh, frivolously in this type of economy because everything seems to be slowing. And I hope that the people keep an eye on those books. And uh, so that, you know, that's the tough part. You got to keep an eye on what's going on with your local community and make sure that they're spending wisely. Um, unfortunately, you're seeing a slowing across many sectors, not just real estate. You know, it's not just the villages. It's all over and I keep an eye on it. We're in several markets. You know, you get a lot of feedback. I'm not like the other channels. I'm, I'm not a big fan of going out there saying, oh my God, everything's, you know, the world's going to explode tomorrow. That's not my gig. I've always said from the beginning, and you can go back to one of my first videos, that, you know, it's going to be a gradual decline in the market in, in Florida. Um, it may speed up a little bit after the election. We'll find out. But if there's any kind of chaos going on in the United States um, after or during this election, you can almost guarantee that the economy is going to slow from it. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope cooler heads prevail between all this. I'm not political, but at the same time, you got to have stability in the United States. So let's hope that uh, some of these people get their places rented. Inventory is going to continue to go up, in my opinion. I think prices will continue to fall gradually. And it's obviously been shown that they're falling gradually. Houses that were listed at 370, 380, you know, a 2 2 Durham model, you know, courtyard villa for selling for 339. I'm seeing other ones that just hit the market at 380. I mean, obviously, those realtors haven't been watching the market very much over the last six months. Um, you know, it's just funny how the pricing in the villages works. And it's not immune to what's going on outside the bubble. It is what it is. And just you go up to Ocala. Ocala's got 4,700 homes for sale. The small little area, 4,700 homes, massive overbuilt, massively overbuilt. And this is going on all over the South. You're going to have all these homes from basically just sitting there because the demand has fallen off the cliff. And a lot of people are moving back to, to their previous states. You know, COVID's over. They need to get rid of these properties. And that is definitely happening, happening to some extent, okay? But there's also a lot of people in Florida that can't afford to live there anymore, you know, between hurricanes, between insurance, between car insurance, and some of the costs that have been going up in Florida. Um, you know, people need to realize if you go talk to your local, you know, codes department, they will tell you and that, you know, more people equals higher taxes. That's why you can go to a small town and still have relatively low taxes, Okay. But, you know, more people equals higher costs for everybody in infrastructure maintenance. So everybody have a good day. Just want to bring out, hey, you know, rentals are way up. Go here to Villages tab, go to rentals. We don't really do them, but you can search them on our website. And go to the all inventory. You can search the inventory and you can see 520 homes. I mean, three weeks ago, that was at 455. So this is up over 10%. We're probably seeing about 12 to 13% increase in inventory in three weeks. That's quite a bit. So everybody have a good day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.